and welcome to Annetta and Friends. We are here in Orangeburg, South Carolina at the Restoration and Redemption Ministries on 1335 Amelia Street, where the pastor is Pastor Betty Robinson. And we are so honored and privileged to have with us today Pastor Betty Robinson. Thank you so much for allowing us to come into your this beautiful, beautiful sanctuary. Uh, we're going to show you some pictures of this church. It's over 100 years yes. old, and it used to be a Catholic church. Yes. Is that correct? Absolutely. And now uh, Pastor Betty and her congregation have services here uh, throughout uh, the month. So, um, Pastor Betty. Yes. Tell us a little, I know you wear many, many hats. You do a lot of things and you, uh, you're so busy. Um, but just tell us a little bit about how you came to start Restoration and Redemption Ministries here in Orangeburg. Well, actually, you know, it is a calling. Mm -hmm. And so I was already evangelizing um, three years prior. Mm -hmm. And I got called into the Ministry of Pastoral. Mm. Um, last year, August, I was licensed ordained as a pastor. Mm. And so we've only been going about six months, so we're still early in the pastoral part of it. We're just being birthed six months old. So we're excited about it here at Restoration. We are very excited about the work that God is doing okay. for us and through so us. So you us. should actually started this ministry started the physical ministry. During the pandemic? Is that yes. what you're saying? We were birthed during the pandemic, yes. Oh, wow. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's amazing. And that's why we we're even the more excited because yes. we said if he birthed us during the pandemic, it got to be something special about restoration and redemption it has to be. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, it is a beautiful, beautiful sanctuary. We're going to be showing you some uh, photos throughout this interview. So, Pastor Betty, tell us, and I know, I, I hope you don't mind me calling you Pastor Betty. Uh, oh, that yes. just sounds so, you know. <laughs> um, tell us, um, just walk us through a little bit about your journey personally. Um, my personal journey, um, I was reared here in Orangeburg. Mm -hmm. And so, in and out of church, um, Mm -hmm. was out of church for a long time after I got 19 and thought I was grown. Mm. Didn't want to see church because I was in church so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, after that for a while, I um, got more, got back into church because I knew mm -hmm. what my backbone was. It's something was. pulling you back in. Always it was calling me back, back in saying, yeah. listen, come mm -hmm. back to mm -hmm. your first love. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we forget to come back to our first love. Right, right. And so I did that and I was in my home church for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I knew God was transitioning me to do something different mm -hmm. um, than the traditional Baptist church that I came out of. Mm -hmm. And that's nothing against Baptist churches, people. <laughs> I'm just saying it was a different calling for me. Right. And mm -hmm. I started, I joined a non-denominational church here in Orangeburg. And okay. I did that. I attended that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And after I did that, um, I started working in various areas of the church doing different types of ministry. Mm -hmm. During the time I was there, God also pulled me to my outreach ministry. Mm -hmm. And I do have an outreach ministry, Impact Outreach Ministry, where we go out into the neighborhoods. We're in Philly Park. We are feeding the homeless. We are clothing mm -hmm. the naked. We are giving gifts and, and, and health services to the less fortunate. We're mm -hmm. at the local schools in the area. Whatever we find our hands to do, mm -hmm. that's what we do with Impact Outreach Ministry. Mm -hmm. And that is separate from my church. From your church. Okay. Yes. Okay. And um, after that, um, I started my boutique because I like to dress myself. Mm -hmm. And so I like to dress on a budget. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I started with She Thrifty Boutique where you can dress um fine mm -hmm. and you don't have to spend every dime that you have mm. and so i started that as well um with she thrifty boutique mm -hmm. um and it's now called she boutique i took the thrifty out and just she boutique mm -hmm. and then the ministry came about year you know a couple years later so that's where i am right now oh, that was wow. my transition period between all those things and i wear a lot of hats i also work for our local public safety so i work in the oh, I get well. i'm tired <laughs> to hear you talk <laughs> oh wow that's amazing you uh pastor a church and then you work a full-time job too yes and you have a business called she boutique yes oh 
gosh. Um, so we just, um, one of the things that, that you were talking about earlier, when you talked about your boutique, um, we know that female pastors are put to a different standard yes. than male pastors. We have different, it's just, it's just different because they look at you and they see a female pastor, the first thing they're going to, to look at sometimes is what you have on. Yes. And, and then um, their, their mindset is going to change as well. So we want you to talk about being a female pastor during this time okay. um, and how, how is it that you maneuver and, and get away from the stereotypes. Great. Um, so, of course, um, I had this conversation with someone about how um, most people look at the gender role as pastoring, that we as women shouldn't be pastor. We can evangelize, we can minister, but we shouldn't pastor. We shouldn't lead because mm -hmm. we're so emotional. Mm. But like you just said, God calls to qualify. He justifies us so we don't have to worry about what they say. Mm -hmm. We know that there's a call in our life. Work the calling. He said, yeah. work the work of them that sent you. Yes. And so that's all. That's what I do. I just do the work yes. you know, that yes. God has given me to do. I don't worry about genders. I don't worry about what he's saying, what she's saying. I do what he says. And that's yes. what the Lord says. Yes. And so yes. now all, you know, a lot of times people do look at you and, oh, you're too emotional. Or you look mm -hmm. at it from a female's point of view. No, mm -hmm. I look at it from a God's point of view. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. And that's mm -hmm. how I handle it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't go back and forth and mm -hmm. we don't get into the argument. We just give them the word and we let them go. Let them go. That's, That's what right. we do. That's we don't right. argue the word mm -hmm. of God. And so I do as much as I can do and what I can do during the pandemic because I do have people that reach out to me that's outside of my ministry mm -hmm. um, that are just calling, that needs comfort, that needs prayer, mm -hmm. that needs a listening ear, mm -hmm. that just needs a chest to lay on at sometimes. And so I do all of that. Mm -hmm. Whether they are male or female that's reaching out, mm -hmm. you know, problems don't have a gender. That's exactly right. Sin does not have a gender. That's right. You That's know, right. so we all face all these things and being as I am a confident woman. Mm. So I'm mm. confident in that mm -hmm. which he have set me to mm -hmm. do and I just do it. Mm -hmm. That's, That's how right. I combat That's that. That's right. That's right. And I mean, being compassionate um, is, is something that I believe that we as, well, you as female, I'm not a pastor, but I minister a lot of people. Um, you as a female pastor, I think it gives us a, a head start because we, we can actually feel that person's pain yes. because we are naturally mothers. Yes. But you, got the, you have to, to realize that God sees no gender. No. God does not mm -hmm. see male or female. He said, I will pour my spirit out on all oh. flesh. Yes. All flesh. Mm -hmm. So that means every last every, one of us. We mm -hmm. all have a calling. We all have something that we can give someone else. We all have something that we can impart into someone else. So and it doesn't matter about what gender you are. Right. It doesn't matter about whether you're rich, whether you're poor, where you come from, where you're going. You know, it's about um, giving people the word and what they need at that particular time because you go to somebody you you got to meet people where they are Absolutely. because you go to them you start quoting scriptures they're going to be like oh you know that does not put for no food in my refrigerator right yes. You know, yes it does not feed my children you know yes. i send my children to school and that sort of thing does not put any any money in my pocketbook you know so you have to meet the immediate needs yes. Yes. of those individuals and people get into these arguments they get into they get so bogged down in gender yes you know yes. they get so bogged down in whether you male or female what does it matter when you need somebody right. to throw you yes. a lifeline yes you know Absolutely. when you out there drowning what does it matter who throws right. you yes. a lifeline Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know because you're drowning you want somebody to help save you yes. you yes. know Absolutely. that's what you want you don't want to you, nobody's gonna look at you and say okay you a female pastor and i'm drowning so i'm gonna wait until the male pastor comes you know that's so traditional that's so, god is <laughs> is not about people put god in a box yes. and they they label him and they put limitations on right. you. There is no limitations no. when it comes to God. And you can look at this beautiful sanctuary. You can feel the, the, the spirit here. You can feel um, the comfort. You know, you can feel that you have dressed this place with peace. Yes. 
And that's what, um, that's what people need now. They need to know that they're going to be taken care of, that someone, sometimes people just need a hug. You yes, know? absolutely, yes. <laughs> they just need you to <laughs> hug them, you know, and say, it's going to be all right, whatever it is. Whatever. Yes. It's going to be yes. all right. So I applaud you for even taking on um, the task of, of ministering to people and trying to be a lifeline to people. She is right here in the middle of town, right on one of the main streets. Uh, when you come to Orangeburg, she's right on the corner. Beautiful sanctuary, uh, has a lot of history. Uh, and very the the wood the dark wood and I don't know whether it's cherry or what it is but I know that it's something that you don't see very right. often mm -hmm. because it's just the yes. detail is just so amazing it's just so beautiful um, and we're going to show some of those on our website as well okay. um, so tell us uh, your personal testimony um, I don't know. I think we need to take a break first. Okay. <laughs> uh, because I got a feeling your personal testimony might run over. <laughs> so we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to hear from Pastor Betty as she talks about her personal testimony and her personal walk with God. So stay right there. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Annetta and Friends segment of View from the Pew. We are here at Restoration and Redemption Ministries on Amelia Street in Orangeburg, South Carolina, where the pastor is Pastor Betty Robinson. And we're so fortunate we have her today talking about her own personal testimony, her own personal journey, and how she came to be pastor of restoration and redemption ministry tell us a little bit about your personal testimony because i know you had to go through something to get here oh yes so tell oh, us yes. about the pivotal moment when you were going through so much until you knew that god was calling you to a higher calling number one but that he was calling you to minister to other people mm, my god <laughs> My God, mm. <laughs> I know it. Jesus. Well, I, I went through um, a period of just being a single parent, mm. um, in and out of relationships that didn't amount to anything. Mm. One of the relationships was abusive. Mm. Um, so the hurt, the disappointment, the upset of all of that going through that i'm like god it has to be a better way than this mm -hmm. and so just going through that and, and, and many of us go through that those are just problems of the heart mm -hmm. that we go through things that we should let go and we know we should but we don't we hold right. on to it longer than what we need to and so it starts to manifest itself into something that's not good for us right, right and right. so in the in the um clubs i, I was never a drinker never a smoker but i love to party mm -hmm. i was always out mm -hmm. but being out a lot Hiding mm. the hurt. Mm -hmm. Self-medicating. Self-medicating. Mm -hmm. And finding myself in relationships I know I shouldn't be in. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it gets tired. So. Yes. And going and going till you're just tired of going. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was like, God, you know, something has to Something's happen. Gotta, yeah. Because this is getting old. Yeah, and here yeah. it is the same thing I'm doing in the ages of 20 and 30 was the same thing I'm doing at 19 no it has to yeah, be a different lifestyle right. than this and so even I got married um, in 2011 mm -hmm. and ended up in divorce mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know that mm -hmm. but it ended in divorce it wasn't very horrific but it was not the best marriage there was mm -hmm. um, so as I was just going through different relationship issues um, personal issues um, at home and I heard the voice of God. Mm, mm. And when I heard the voice of God, like many of us that's clergy, 
we are like, God, are you sure? Mm -hmm. We question it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I heard it over and over. Then I have the dreams and I start having the visions and mm -hmm. I still fought against it because right. we want to do what we want to do. Right. And what right. we want to do is not the will of God. We want to do our will. Yes. And yes. so I finally said, okay, God, this is it. I can't throw up your hands. It. Got my hands I'm not up. Gonna kick against the prick anymore. <laughs> Here yeah. I am. Yeah. Yes. And yes. so I did that. I went to my apostle at that time and told him, um, I felt the pull and the call of God on my life. Mm -hmm. And as I went to him and he said, yes, it's there, but I had to wait for you mm -hmm. to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. And so we went into classes and we began to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I just immediately, because it was stuff that I was already doing. That's right. how you know what your calling is, because yeah. your calling is what you're already passionate That's about. That's right. And That's it was right. stuff that I was already doing, mm -hmm. but it was the stuff mm -hmm. with now the Holy Ghost is on it. Mm. The spirit of the Lord is with you. Mm -hmm. And so that's when ministry start to take off. When mm. you say, God, this is it. Mm -hmm. I lift mm -hmm. my hands in total surrender. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit comes in and do what he's supposed to do. And it takes off. It's nothing you can do about nothing it. Nothing you can and do so about it. And so I thank God that when I surrendered all, not Ooh. some, but when I surrendered all, <laughs> it all came to full fruition. <laughs> And I said, Lord, I thank you. Yes, yes. And so yes, he began yes. to just deal with me in different areas of ministry. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so what he did is what you see now. Mm, mm. Lord, have mercy. Yes, he can. Oh, so I thank God. You know, my story is not a whole horrific story, but there were yes, things in times in my life that I, I didn't do what God had told me to uh -huh, do. Uh -huh. I wanted to do Betty. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then he said, when you stop doing Betty and you pick me up, then we'll mm, go. And mm. so that's what happened. I put Betty down. I put Betty's will down. Yes. And I yes, remember that God's God said, will. now listen. Yeah. Uh -huh. When I call you to do a thing, I'm going to gift you. I'm going to gift you to do that thing. See, we have to be graced for mm -hmm. it. You can't just get into ministry and you're not graced for it because you're not going to last. Mm. Yes. Is that yes. when God came in and cleaned me up. Yes, yes. Like he's doing many out there. He's trying to mm -hmm. clean you up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you let go and let God, it's going to work every time. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And it's going to manifest in your life, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. your community, on your job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's the kind of God we serve, the yes, favor of God is. when it's on your life. That's all you that's got. All you Lord, can. have mercy. Ooh, God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, if I wasn't mic'd up, I'd get up and run around this church. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that is so key. So one thing you said that really stuck with me that people are not willing to do, and that is you surrendered. Surrender. You have to surrender unto God. Yes. And once you surrender and you got you like, you know, because you go through so much yes. and you get tired of being tired, yes. you know, because yes. you're like, OK, what I'm doing is not working. This mm. is not working. Oh you know, I'm not trying to make a, a relationship work. I'm trying to make yes. a marriage oh work. Yes. I'm trying to make and it's mm. not working. So, God, what is it? What and is then it? you surrender. And you say, okay, that's it. I got my hands up. Yes. I got my hands up. This is it. Whatever, whatever. And when you do that, then God steps in and he takes over because he's not going to, he, he's going to do supernaturally yes. what you can't do we in can't the, do. when you do it naturally, he's going to do it supernaturally yes. and he's going to take over in the spirit, yes. you know? So you said that was so key to someone out there that's just yes. holding on to something and it's not working. And you're just holding on and holding on. And you, you say, kind of like what they said back in the day, waiting for my change to come. <laughs> you know, just hold. You got to let go and let God. And when you let go and let God, then he starts to work and he yes. starts to do a work in yes, you. He does. And then what you've got to do, you've got to transform your mind. You've yes. got to transform yes. your thinking. Mm -hmm. Paul say, renew your mind. Yes. So you've got to renew Daily. your mind, mm -hmm. renew your way of thinking and, and start speaking stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, start speaking positivity. And if you start speaking positivity, your body is going to react to it. The atmosphere starts to line up with whatever you say. You know what? And if you start saying stuff and you start speaking it and then, and then everything starts to line up, the heavens open up and oh, yes. God says, okay, give her what she wants. Yes. And that, 
Oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, whatever you speak on earth, I'm mm, going to agree with you in heaven. Agree What's with well? you. Yes. So we have to get to that point that we can speak it. Mm. We can have our mm. manifestation through our keys of our tongue. Mm -hmm. Your mm. keys is in, in your mouth. That's right. And so that's what he told us. He said, whatsoever. So there's not nothing that you can nothing. go to God and ask him for that nothing. he would not release to you. Mm. He said, whatsoever you bind on earth, I'm going to bind in heaven. Yes. And whatsoever yes. you loose on earth, I'm, I'm going to loose it, in, it heaven. in heaven. So there is yes. no reason why we should still be bounded. We shouldn't be sick. We shouldn't be going through anything because mm -hmm. he said, you don't have it because you ain't said nothing. Mm -hmm. You got to open your mouth and you will mm -hmm. see it once you say it. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. have to make sure mm -hmm. that we are opening our mouth and we are speaking mm -hmm. positive, mm -hmm. positive things. That's right. And once we release it, it's going to come back to It'll us come in full back. That's right. He's That's right. Whatever it. you speak, it, it's He's like a boomerang. It. it comes yes. right back to you. That's yes, exactly right. Your God. tongue is your key. It's your key. The your tongue, tongue unlocks key. the door. That's yeah. your access. It unlocks it. But you've got to be able to speak. You know, I'm looking back on oh things God. that I've written five years ago, ten years ago. Um, I would keep a journal, keep a notebook, and sometimes I would just find pieces of paper, just write stuff down. Sometimes I wrote letters to God. Sometimes I wrote letters to myself. And I look back at some of those things, and I got exactly what I wrote down. The things that I asked for, the things that I wrote in that, in that journal, God gave them to me, and I'm looking at. It. I said, you know, one thing, I got that. I, got, you know, and when I wrote it down, I didn't. There was no way, you know, it was like it was so far away yes. from becoming a reality until okay, this is impossible. But I received those things. Mm. So you, you have to renew your mind, renew your thinking, use your tongue as the key yes. to unlock the door. Yes, in everything that God because he said whatever you ask whatever. I will give My to you God. so whatever you say whatever you ask for because sometimes we have not because we ask not, not. you know mm -hmm. so ask for it and then you start doing something to work toward it yes. you got to start acting like you already got it that's right that's right you know like yes. if you want the house if you want the whatever it is you you know like if you, if you wanted to say for instance this property and you say you know what I want that property and you start walking around this property mm -hmm. and you start saying okay this this is mine I'm gonna claim this yes. I'm gonna and you start walking around this property you know what's gonna happen sooner or later you're gonna get that property mm -hmm. sooner or later it's gonna cut an opportunity is gonna present itself where you're going to get it Yes. You know, and it, and that's not that's not anything spooky. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you know, it's something that promises are made to us. We know we're just a ball of energy. Prayer is energy. We're energy. So if you put that energy out there, that energy is going to come back to you. Whatever you put out comes back to you. Whatever you give, you receive. Whatever you open your hands up for, you receive. Whatever you give is going to come back to you. So we've got to start realizing that. And we've got to start putting those kinds of things into activation. We're not doing enough of that. You know? Right. We're not, the, 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 sometimes churches are like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Right. You know, got the offering played out. Mm -hmm. But then you're not answering the the needs of the My people God, yes. in the con people are coming to church mm -hmm. and they are hungry, they are homeless, they you know they they're things that they need and we're preaching and preaching and preaching and putting out an offering plate when there are people in the congregation who need love yes. and affection yes. and attention mm -hmm. and the, and they're not being given that. Now you have an outreach ministry that yes. you touched a little bit on. And in that outreach ministry, what do you, what do you do? What do what what is the main focus of the ministry? What's the name of it? First of all, the name of it is Impact Outreach Ministry. The main focus of that we cater mostly to the homeless. Mm -hmm. um, we do a little bit of everything, not just the homeless, but that is our main. That's our passion. Our love is the homeless because okay. they don't have the resources. That's they don't right. have anyone that's giving them, um, feeding them. Um, so we do a lot of that. We, we feed them. We give them clothing. We give them toiletries. Mm -hmm. We are always out giving them. And we don't have a whole lot here in Orangeburg, so we go to Finley Park a lot. But for the ones that we do have that's here in Orangeburg, mm -hmm. we go out and we feed hot meals to them as well. And you, there's one thing about the homeless. is like in order for them to receive resources, you have to have an address. Yes. So if you're homeless and you don't have an address, you can't really get resources. Right. So that's why it's so important. 
um, to minister and to meet the needs of the homeless because they don't have an address. They can't get an EBT card because they don't have an address. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very, very good ministry, and we applaud you for that. And that is outside of, outside the, of the or in addition to, I should say, yes. into uh, Restoration and Redemption yes. Ministries, which is your uh, actual church where you have a congregation. Well, we thank you so much, Pastor Betty. And you all, we are here again at the uh, Restoration and Redemption Ministries in Orangeburg, South Carolina, where the pastor is Pastor Betty Robinson. And be on the lookout for more because you're going to be seeing more of her. Uh, stay tuned for the uh, Restoration and Redemption broadcast yes. that will be coming. And um, we just, you know, God, God is so awesome. He's yes, just he so is. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and we look forward yes, to what all he's going to do for this ministry yes, and for Pastor Betty. Um, go to our website at women, the letter N, the word power, dot O-R-G, dot org, and find out how to get in touch with Pastor Betty and to see photos of this beautiful, beautiful sanctuary here in Orangeburg, South Carolina, and also learn how to give into this ministry and the Impact Outreach Center. God bless you, God keep you, and may the heavens continue to smile upon you.